The Pandavas fled from their enemies and came to the village of Ek Chakra, disguised as poor Brahmins. A kind-hearted family gave them shelter in a small cottage near their home. The Pandavas had to make a living by begging. Whatever they received at the end of the day, the five Pandavas and their mother Kunti divided into two parts. One part was given to Bhim, and the other part was shared among the four brothers and their mother. Bhim got the lion's share because he was as huge as a mountain and had an enormous appetite. One day, the four brothers went out to beg, leaving Bhim and his mother at home. In the quiet of the afternoon, Bhim and his mother heard cries coming from their neighbor's home. Kunti went across and there saw a strange scene. The father shouted, I am the head of the family. I must go. The mother shouted, I am the mother of two children. I must go. The daughter shouted, I am your daughter. I must go. The young son waved a blade of grass like a sword and shouted, I am big and strong. I must go. Kunti asked why the family was so upset. Don't you know, said the father, in a cave outside the village lives a demon called Bakasur, who rules over us. Every day, added the mother, the village must send two buffaloes, three big baskets of food and one human being to feed Bakasur. It is our turn now, said the daughter. I will go, shouted the son. Kunti begged the family to be quiet. I have a plan, she said. I will ask my son to slay the demon. He is very strong and has killed many demons. The family was grateful for Kunti's offer to help. But Yudhishthir, Bhim's eldest brother, was angry when he heard the plan. Why are you putting my brother in danger? He asked his mother. Kunti explained. I am certain that your brother, Bhim, will be safe. Has he not fought and defeated demons in the past? Besides, it is our duty in life to help those who are in difficulty. Bhim was glad to help. He collected a huge supply of food and made his way to the demon's cave. Once there, he called out, Bakasur, come and get your food. If you don't come out, I will eat it all up. Bakasur could not believe his ears. No one had spoken to him rudely before. He rushed out of the cave furiously and attacked Bhim. But Bhim showed no fear. He turned his back on the demon, sat down and began to eat the food. In his fury, Bakasur struck a heavy blow on the back of Bhim's neck. But to the powerful Bhim, it was as if a fly had tickled him. Next, Bakasur uprooted a banyan tree and flung it at Bhim. Bhim caught it with one hand and tossed it away as if it were a straw blown by the wind. Now wild with rage, Bakasur tore rocks from the ground and threw them at Bhim, who by now had finished all the food. Wiping his fingers on a cloth, he rose to fight the demon. What a struggle there was! It was as if two of the world's biggest mountains were wrestling. The earth and the sky trembled as they fought. Then Bhim raised the demon over his head and hurled him to the ground. A huge cloud of dust rose where Bakasur fell, and when it had cleared... The demon was lying lifeless on the stony ground. Bhim returned to a joyful welcome in the village. But the Pandavas knew that the people would spread the word of Bhim's great victory, and the enemies of the Pandavas would discover them. So, under cover of night, the Pandavas left as quietly as they came.